The Madison County Courthouse was designed by Columbus architect George H. Maitzel and constructed in 1892. Located at 1 North Main Street in the county seat of London, the building is still in use today and houses the Madison County Court of Common Pleas and its probate and juvenile division. The courthouse is three stories tall and built on a Berea sandstone foundation. It was the last of Ohio County courthouses to use second empire style architecture. The interior and exterior of the building have remained unchanged since 1892. The interior features dark wood tile and pressed metal ceilings, as well as several fireplaces. In 1973, the courthouse was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. The department was founded on July 9, 1921. It began as a minor records keeping facility in conjunction with the Department of Public Welfare. The Department of Corrections originally housed BCI in the basement of the Ohio State Penitentiary in Columbus, Ohio, until a fire and subsequent threat of riot by inmates in 1930 forced a move to the London Prison Farm. During those early years, inmate labor performed most of the work. Interestingly, archives show these inmates reviewing, indexing, and sorting fingerprinting records. In 1959, an 11,350 square foot structure was erected in front of London Prison Farm. At the same time, the Investigations Division was formally added. Investigative field agents were hired and the name was changed from Bureau of Criminal Identification to Bureau of Criminal Identification and Investigation. In 1963, BCI was taken over by the Attorney General's office and was given a broader range of activities. In 1972, Attorney General William Brown reorganized BCI into five separate divisions. Identification, Laboratory, Investigations, Administration, and Data Systems. In 1998, under the tutelage of former Attorney General Betty Montgomery, a $20.3 million, 122,000 square foot facility was erected which allowed BCI to be more visible to the community and expanded its assistance to law enforcement. Since 1999, the Bureau has grown to staff more than 300 employees. In 1915, Ada Bertha Cooper willed 12 acres of land to the Madison County Commissioners to re be reserved for use of a county hospital. On September 11, 1962, Ada's dream came true when the Madison County Hospital opened with 64 beds. The hospital was expanded in 1973 when 34 beds were made available. The addition to the building also increased the size of the emergency room and outpatient clinic, as well as renovating the intensive care unit. The founding fathers of the hospital have worked hard to ensure the offering of modern conveniences and equipment. Today, it continues to be the Madison County Hospital's mission to offer the latest technology and a healing environment for exceptional patient care. In 1964, the hospital employed a young college student, Robert Nichols. In 1970, Robert Nichols was appointed Common Pleas Court Judge in Madison County. At that time, he was the youngest judge in the state of Ohio. Since then, he has been elected eight times and is now set on the bench for 40 years. He is now the longest serving judge in the state of Ohio. While Judge Nichols hears all serious criminal complaints and serious civil matters, perhaps his proudest moment was his appearance as a guest star in Law and Order London High School. Stanley Watson came to Lafayette from Connecticut. He married Effa, a daughter of William and Mary Minter, on April 8, 1831. 
William Minter conveyed to Stanley Watson the lot on which the Red Brick Tavern was to be erected in 1836. Records indicate a brick tavern was built for Calvin Anderson by Stanley Watson and was in operation when the National Road was completed through the Deer Creek Township in 1836 to 1837. Once the property was sold to Joe Weingart from 1924 to 1940, the Red Brick was operated as a tea room restaurant and photo show lodging was offered to tourists and others until 1930. In 1972, a group of local businessmen purchased the property. After a year of major re renovations, the restaurant reopened to customers. George M Martindale of Springfield ran the tavern for one year. Upon his departure, local businesswoman Eleanor Lanigan took over until 1982. At that time, Jean and Shirley Freet became the host of the Red Brick Tavern. In 1996, they also purchased the property along with the restaurant. The Red Brick was then owned and operated by their son, Sean Freet, in partnership with Jean. After Jean's death, the restaurant was run by Sean and Christy Freet. The restaurant was sold in 2007 to Chris Cummings and Madonna Christy. Six presidents have visited Ohio's second oldest stagecoach shop known as the Red Brick Tavern. John Tyler, Warren G. Harding, Martin Van Buren, John Quincy Adams, William Henry Harrison, and Zachary Taylor. Today, the Red Brick Tavern is still a popular restaurant and attraction in London. Roy M. Cotman, a former dean of Ohio State's College of Food, Agricultural, and Environmental Sciences, is credited for launching Farm Science Review. In 1962, the Farm Science Review was officially born. The first show was held at the Ohio State University Don Scott Airport in Northwest Columbus, Ohio. Over 18,000 visitors paid 50 cents a ticket to view 116 commercial exhibits and be the first to witness no till corn demonstrations. For the next decade, visitors were treated to such programs as research on 20-inch and 30-inch corn rows, the introduction of big farm equipment, solid row soybean planting, conservation exhibits, fertilizer application by airplane, and research to flight corn blight. By 1979, with 66,000 visitors and 423 companies, Farm Science Review was outgrowing its 45-acre exhibition area at Don Scott. In 1983, the museum moved to its permanent home in London, Ohio, on 993 acres of land donated by the Molly Brown Marion Fisher. Today, Farm Science Review is Ohio's premier outdoor agriculture, educational, and trade show, drawing upwards of 140,000 visitors from across the United States and Canada over three days. Visitors pursue 4,000 product lines from 600 commercial exhibitors and learn the latest in agricultural research, conservation, and the environment family and nutrition, and gardening and landscape. Farm Science Review continues to be held during the third full week of September at the Molly Caron Agricultural Center in North Ohio. Each November, London High School hosts the Veterans Day Assembly, which is attended by the entire student body and open to the public. The following is a clip from the November 2010 Veterans Day Assembly. And a story I hope everyone else will come to understand. It is a beautiful Sunday afternoon in May 1968. My husband, Howard, has been in Vietnam since March. He thought it'd be best to stay with my parents while he was gone. As I glanced at the Sunday paper, I noticed wedding announcements, de department store sales, and upcoming movies. Nestled in the back pages of a remote section of the paper, I spotted an article about a battle in Vietnam. I avoid reading about the war, but this article found me. The action described in the article involves Howard's unit. It reads, War refugees are flooding into Saigon. They hit us hard all night with mortars and rockets, said Major Boris. We've been lucky so far. Only four killed and 14 wounded in the battalion. Howard is dead. I know it. I don't know how I know. I just know. I can't breathe. Tears are coming. I'm trembling inside and out. Mom comes into the yard and asks, what's wrong? I show him read the article and whisper, Howard's dead. Three days later, May 15, 1968. Mom stands over the stove preparing dinner as my father watches, watches the evening news and I return home from work. Something draws me to the front windows. An ugly green sedan with the words U.S. Army printed on the side of the door is parked in front of the house. The room starts spinning. My hearing becomes muffled and reality is slipping away from me. They're coming to tell me he's dead. Please, God, let him be wounded, not dead, I say. Two men continue to sit in the car. Hours seem to pass before they get out, straighten their uniforms, and head toward my door. I open the door and see two men standing with the same terror in their eyes that I'm feeling inside of me. Good evening, they say as they remove their hats. We're looking for Pauline Quarry. That's me. They look at my retreating abdomen, which holds my unborn child. 
and they look at each other in a silence which lingers too long. Was he wounded or killed? How bad is it? More silence, finally they begin. We regret to inform you that your husband, Sergeant Howard E. Perry, was fatally wounded on the afternoon of May 10th by a penetrating missile wound to his right shoulder. I'm dizzy. I can't think straight. Dead? Is he dead? They don't answer me. They just reread their script as if practicing their lines for a performance. We regret to inform you that the room starts spinning and I can't think. I sit politely as they inform me of all the details. Funeral, remains, escort, military cemetery, and medals. Everything is numb. It is for men like Howard that we are here today to recognize Veterans Day. Several veterans have gathered with us so that we may honor them and allow them to see how their service can fulfill our dreams. These men and women fight, suffer, and watch others pass so that our liberties and freedoms are preserved. So how can we repay them for what they have done for us? Nothing may ever compensate for what they have provided for our country, but as citizens, we have responsibilities that repay our veterans in just a small margin. It is our duty as students and together as a community to respect veterans and their service. Let's accomplish our goals and make a difference in the world. I imagine this is what those who have served would like us to do. So, not only for today, but for tomorrow and the days to come, remember, remember that many have fought and suffered so that we can live the American dream. Thank you. The celebration has begun, but it is not over yet. The Bicentennial celebration continues year-round, and more events will be open to the public soon. We hope that you have enjoyed your time here and that you've learned something you didn't know about our town. 200 years is a great marker, but our history and our legacy are not yet finished. The future is not yet written, and London's future will be a bright one.